Hello, my favorite internet people. I wanted to quickly say that you guys are amazing. I love to see the feedback and the involvement of the content that is being created here. Keep it up, guys. Today's video is very important because we will learn how to handle multi level pointers in csharp.net. It involves how to scan for pointers, how to read pointers, and finally, writing to pointers. If you want to advance in your trainer creations, it is essential for you to complete this chapter. It will set you up to make more complex trainers in the near future. If you're new here, then I recommend doing my previous tutorials before doing this one so you understand what is going on. And as always, read the terms of agreements for your game before making the trainer and I hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, so pointer scanning. Uh, what is a pointer? It's uh, something that points to a specific place in memory, either from a base. This is the main module. It points from the main module plus an address to our cache here. And there is uh, a classic way of doing it. It is by checking what accesses this address. So if you check the address of the value that you have, you will get the offset and the address. And you can go back until you have the whole pointer and write it down. But we will instead pointer scan. So we get all of this without uh, doing much at all. How do we do that? We find the value. So I'll find it real quick. It's a four byte value and it's um, the whole, all of the numbers, but without the decimal points here. So for 42,037, I'll uh, buy something, change it real quick. So we find the address. You should be able to find your value and here is a lot of them let's change a couple of them nothing nothing and the last one it changed so it's the last address and now we want to uh, find this by pointer scanning you can see that our pointer points to this address but uh, to pointer scan for 64 bit games, use a pointer map. If you're using 32 bit games, it might just go really quick. But if you want to save time and you have more than one uh, variable to search through, generate a pointer map and scan through it when you uh, do pointer scans. And to generate a pointer map, you right click, generate pointer map. Let's call it uh, the game and it will generate a pointer map. Uh, I will cut this anyways, who cares? All right, so my pointer map is done. It's somewhere in the file explorer, but uh, when your pointer map is done, you can click on right click pointer scan for this address and now click on used pointer map. Click the one that we made and open. Now instead of cheat onion automatically creating a pointer map, we can use this pointer map. Lovely. Uh, for the level of offsets, I will start with five offsets. If you don't get any results or anything that works over time, use more offsets. You can use the checkbox here, pointers must end with a specific offset if you want less results, but that is if you know uh, the offset. You can use the, the check what as accesses this address, but uh, let's keep it simple. So I'll, I'll keep it unchecked. Let's uh, pointer scan. 
Let's call it uh, cash money. There we go. So quite a bit of results. 1361. If you have used a specific offset, you wouldn't get these many results. Let's uh, restart the game with a different save file so we don't uh, get a pointer that only works with one save file. So, uh, all right, all right. So I have opened the game again with a different save file to get a better working pointer and I'll go to inventory I have my value here I'll select the game uh, I'll keep it but now a lot of these doesn't work probably most of them so we will rescan but now I will use value to find I don't want to find the address again that's annoying I'll just search for 124, that's not done, 124, 32, that's my value. And just click OK. I'll call it 2 because it's the second search. And now we only have three pointer paths. That's pretty amazing. Uh, let's, uh, I'll add the one, which one is matching with 18. That's my pointer before, and now we have our pointer. Amazing points from module plus an address, the base address, and then 3C8, 18, 48, 130, and finally the last offset, which is C. Let's make the trainer now. Okay, so we're at visual studio um it's the latest one and we will use dotnet 6. i will create a console app in c sharp we'll call it something uh tfbb because that's the game trainer let's uh create it dotnet 6 so on and so on and we will import the sweat 64 library but let's first of all change the properties to use the correct platform target so instead of having any cpu select your platform i have 64 bit i will use 64 bit do you have 32 bit? Use 86. Go back, go to project, manage NuGet packages, search for Sweat64. And uh, if you have 32 bit, use Sweat32, of course, but get the Sweat library. Takes a bit of, bit of time install it and now we can write using sweat 64 we will create an object a sweat object and your process so you can get the process name easily by checking in sheet onion so here we have self park and it was underscore and tf bw there we go don't add dot exe it will not find it if you do now we will need a module to work with and the module that the pointer originated from was the main module dot exe so we'll just uh, copy the module and Get the base address. So module base equals sort of get uh, module base. And now that we have the 
module base, we can create a while loop. So this will just be, uh, so we can change the value dynamically. Uh, it will uh, loop, so to speak. Now, we will now read the pointer that we added and our pointed pointer had first the module base address, then the pointer base, which is 3CDD688, and that points to this address. So we will copy the first one and we will create a new variable, which we call, and remember, uh, when you work with pointers, we're pointing to different objects inside the game. So the last offset will not be pointed to an object. It will point to a field or a variable within uh, an object. So we will read all of the offsets, but the last one, because C is the actual cache offset. So it's just a variable. We will not read it because then we will get or it will return our cache as a pointer. So we read first, second, third, fourth, but not the last one. And thereby we can call it something like gold object. So let be pointer. And we have the module base, we have our offset, and we have a couple of offsets. We have four offsets that we need to. So 3C8, 18, 40, or 48. Let's just 18. 48 and the last one was 130 so we will read the pointers which lead to some kind of gold object or it can be a, a I, I don't know i haven't checked what actually happens but it's some sort of object that holds our gold and now we can read the actual gold so Int gold because it's an integer, four bytes, and now we use read int instead of a pointer. And now we have the gold object and our offset, which was C. This is our gold. We can now write it to the uh, command prompt or, yeah. No, the console, it's a console. We'll have some text before that. So, uh, your current cache is, and then plus gold. There we go. And we can write how much gold do you want? And we take the new gold in a console.read line. Uh, why does it stay green? Because it can return now, but we don't care about that. Let's. We don't make, need to make good code, do we? Uh, after that, we can write a new gold value so write int and then the gold object again and our offset and now the new gold if you want to store the address of the gold you can just add um, the c and the gold object uh, or address but uh I guess you can do whatever you want. So I like to use the offsets. Uh, last thing we'll write check in game. So 
my reflex and then some brake lights to create some space in between why didn't it there we go let's uh, start our application and also and now it reads a hundred or hundred and twenty four dollars and thirty two cents how much gold do we want we want a lot of gold and now you can see it changed it also is reading the correct values again after we can change it again back to something similar we can change to it what we want now i have a thousand dollars uh that's about it this isn't a tutorial on what pointers are but uh it's a tutorial on how we handle them so we read for all of the addresses and offsets and then we extract our variable and then we can write something new to it uh i hope the video was good and i'll see you guys in the next video